Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the concept uh, of productivity. This really introduces productivity, what it means, how we do, uh, how, how, what some challenges are, some tricks uh, in, in calculating it. In a separate video I've already recorded that shows how to calculate and compare uh, productivity and some of the tricks it, uh, to watch out for. So productivity is a measure of outputs produced per unit of inputs and and inputs can be resources such as labor capital management and and the objective of any company is to improve productivity. Productivity it, is a measure of efficiency. It is the the ability to convert inputs into outputs. A big number is better than a small number. And it's important to note production is a measure of output only and not a measure of inf input uh, of efficiency. And we need to include uh, uh, inputs uh, to get a measure of efficiency. The, the productivity number by itself doesn't tell us a whole bunch. Frankly, we need to, uh, to compare it to other similar organizations or similar, you know, week to week or between plants to get a measure of, of, of whether one, one company is doing better or, or another. So let's just talk briefly, uh, give you an example, uh, improving productivity at Starbucks. Starbucks has a team or had a team of 10 an analysts that continually looked for ways to save time some improvements so they uh, and so this is efficiency uh, this is some time ago now we have tap almost universally but when they stopped requiring signatures on credit card purchases under 25 bucks they saved eight seconds per transaction change the size uh, of the uh, change the size of the ice scoop saved 14 seconds per drink new espresso machines saved 12 seconds per per shot. So what we're doing here is in each of these cases, eight seconds per transaction, 14 seconds per drink, 12 seconds per shot. And, and it's always an efficiency measure. So uh, this is 14, 14 fewer seconds per drink. So if you have on top output, which is drinks and on the bottom, uh, seconds which is uh, input of time we have a bigger number productivity is improved we've reduced it by 14 seconds uh, per shot so that's that's what we're looking for we're looking at ways to improve our output per unit of input so what this did for starbucks operations improvements have helped starbucks increase yearly revenue per outlet by 200,000 to 940,000 in six years so doing this matters. It's something that organizations do to benchmark uh, and evaluate change. Productivity is improved by 27% or about 4.5% a year. So this is something that companies generally do. Uh, it has a profoundly positive effect if you do it well uh, on both the top and the bottom lines. So let's talk a little bit about what it is. Productivity is a measure of efficiency, a measure of process improvement, uh, it rep represents output relative to input, as I said. Uh, only through productivity increases can we inc can our standard of living improve. So, so we just increasing output doesn't necessarily help. We need to improve the efficiency with which we produce more output in order to raise the standards of living. So, productivity is very simply units produced over input used. So. Uh, if you don't have a rate, units per un units produced per units used, uh, you don't have a measure of productivity. So calculation: if we had labor productivity, it would be units produced divided by labor hours used. Uh, and here's an example: a thousand units of output, 250 hours is four units per labor hour. So if you're doing one resource input that's called single factor productivity uh, in this case we did units per labor hour and if we were comparing this week to last week or two weeks ago that would work fine if we had different labor rates uh, we would want to uh, to to 
to to get a more accurate comparison, we would want to include include uh, labor hour, uh, dollars rather than hours, so that we could compare between two places that have different uh, uh, different labor hours. And I'd encourage you to watch the calculation video in which I I highlight that difference. There's also something called multi-factor productivity. Excuse me for a moment. Multi-factor productivity is output divided by the sum of a several different inputs. In this case, labor, material, energy, capital, and other you know, administrative costs or miscellaneous. If you use everything, it's total factor productivity. If you use just a couple of them, it's multi-factor productivity. And in this case, we have to get them into similar into similar units. So in this case, output and inputs are often expressed in dollars, but for sure, the uh, inputs uh, are expressed in dollars so that we have common units. It's the biggest mistake as students make in calculating productivity is not making them uh, into common units so that they can uh, actually uh, get a productivity measure of output divided by dollars of inputs. So, uh, there are some problems with productivity. Uh, quality may change while quantity of outputs of inputs and outputs remain constant. So if you are changing your process and want to evaluate whether it's more efficient or more productive than it used to be, if the quality of outputs has changed, then you don't have a, 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 a reasonable measure here. So you, you need everything else to stay the same and only outputs and inputs change so that we can see whether we're doing a good job of converting them. So quality is something we need to pay a lot of attention to. There can also be external elements uh, that cause an increase or decrease in productivity. Uh, and so what we do is we, do, we, we calculate productivity and then evaluate whether it's changed for positive reasons because we're doing something right or there's some other factors. In, in a week to week change, you might have plant shutdowns, uh, you might have different quality of inputs, uh, you might be measuring differently, and so uh, productivity can help identify problems, but, but uh, it, it won't give you specifically the source of those problems, so you need to control for the other things. In productivity, generally, this varies substantially from company to company. Uh, if you are increasing productivity, labor contributes about 10% of the annual increase, capital contributes about a third of the annual increase, and management it contributes a little over half of the annual increase. Now, those are generalities, and as is always true with averages, averages are rarely true for any individual company. There's considerable variability, but this gives you the opportunity to really say, sometimes if we, uh, <coughs> in lots of companies, management is the one uh, that we can probably leverage the most for productivity increases. Now, and I'm going to just finish with a discussion of, of service like I have before and, and talk about service has its own unique challenges. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try and calculate service productivity, but it can be a bit more of a challenge. Service is typically labor intensive, as we see in point one, point four, often difficult to mechanize or automate. So sometimes it's tough to make service improvements or make sort of exchange labor for capital or capital for labor, <clears throat> but uh, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Uh, the last point here, and I apologize, it's behind my head. It's often difficult to evaluate for quality, like uh, really to, to measure whether we're making improvements or standing still or, st or stepping back. We have to have consistent quality, as I said earlier, over inputs. And, and how do we measure quality of a service experience if there's variability both in who's providing that service experience and also in the expectations of that customer. So sometimes we do it across big numbers and hope that it, it averages out, but we have to be careful when we're interpreting those numbers. Um, 
And, and that gets at this, this issue of frequently focused on unique individual attributes or desires is, is each individual customer wants something a little bit different and their experience is a little bit different. And, and by saying, oh, you should spend less time with that customer, then we might lose that customer or them, they might not have the same experience. So, so we need to really be careful how we interpret and measure. Uh, how we interpret and measure service productivity. That said, it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. We just need to watch for some of these pitfalls uh, relative to, to, to productivity. So wrapping up, productivity is a measure of efficiency. It is calculated by, by doing output over input. Uh, if we do single factor productivity, we can do it either in units of input used or in dollars, but when we go to multi-factor productivity, we, meet, we need to make sure uh, that uh, the inputs are all in common units uh, and, and that is traditionally dollars. So relatively straightforward concept, encourage you to take a look at the, at the second video, which looks at how to calculate this, these measures in, across a number of examples.